Welcome back everybody, my name is Gamma Trap, one word, and today we're going to be looking at how to solidify your style. Or I guess another way of looking at it is why some artists look like they spend 20 minutes on a piece to get 4,000 likes, while other ones look like they spend 30 hours on a piece to get 20 likes. In the background, we're going to have uh, some footage from one of my streams. I had a uh, sore throat at the time. I think I'm much better now, but I wasn't talking much. So if it looks like I'm just nose to the grindstone and working, that's pretty much a, it, it's what's going on. Usually, I'm, I'm very interactive. I talk a lot and a lot of shenanigans happen, but this time it was kind of Solomon, which is kind of working. I, did, I didn't want to skip a stream because I've been doing so good lately. And people seem to really enjoy my art streams. So I thought, why not just at least do the thing and people can watch the thing and they can come watch. And so I, I typed, uh, I did some sign language. It was, it, was, it, was, it was actually a really good stream. So let's get into this real quick. Why does it seem like sometimes an artist will post some work that to you seems maybe like they didn't really put that much effort into it. Maybe it looks simple, maybe it looks basic or maybe just easy to do, right? And again, your opinion. <laughs> and they'll get like 4,000 likes when you might post something that you spent a lot of time and energy on, and it maybe only gets like 20 or, or 100 or so, right? What is going on right there? Well, I've got a couple of examples, okay? And these might not really apply to you, but we've got two artists, okay? I've talked to both of these artists, and they know exactly what's going to happen, and they're perfectly cool with this. So the first one we're going to look at is Momo Deary or Ranger Liz. She is an artist who makes fan art for Overwatch and Destiny and all kinds of stuff. She's been drawing for a while, and you could clearly tell this. I'm just using this one image because there's, there's, she has a lot of work, okay? Now, when you look at this, you see consistency. Now, when I say consistency, I mean all the line work looks like it fits together. And not only that, the eyes look like they fit on the face. The water looks like it was made with the same kind of coloring and 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 techniques as the skin and and the tube and, and all that stuff, you know, like the donut tube. All of this fits together. Even the trees or, or the palm and the foliage, that looks kind of low effort, like it was a stamp to a certain extent, and it might or might not have been. But the point is, it looks like it fits in the image because of the color palettes, because of how everything lines up, because of all the how the line work and how the flat combines with the 3D kind of elements and the blending. All of that seems to work right that piece looks like it's like it's solid like it can't be shaken up like it can't be taken down like that piece looks amazing and momo has become very good at making pieces like this and this as you can probably guess is one of her styles now i said one of and that's actually really interesting because a lot of artists or a lot of people would assume that artists have like one style let me show you something real quick okay these are my comic book kind of styles Whereas these are my more blending, brushy kind of styles, and these are my charcoal kind of styles. Okay, so you can clearly tell that a lot of artists have several different types of styles. And if you can figure out how to at least just get one style that you really like to work with, that you can, you can then build a base or people who enjoy your work off of that style. And then once you've figured out that style and you've gotten comfortable, then it's really good to establish other styles because you don't want to be pigeonholed into this one thing because then I trust me you're going to get extraordinarily bored right now in contrast to Momo we're going to bring up Josh now Josh is a I would I don't want to say a brand new digital artist but Josh is sort of beginning his road on the path to being a digital artist and I'm going to show you this and it's it's a picture that he recently did with uh, a, a, of a titan with like Zavala's armor from Destiny right and kind of a doom looking helmet it's really cool. It's really not bad for a beginner digital artist. Now, what is it about this piece that stands out the most? Full honesty, not trying to hide things, not trying to distract, not trying to pull any punches. Josh, as you can guess, is not anywhere near as experienced as Momo. And you could already tell that from just looking at this. That's not bad. Momo has years under her belt, whereas Josh kind of just sort of began. And that's actually not a bad beginning spot. If we look at Josh's picture here, what do you see? You see some straight lines. You see some very detailed spots in his piece. You see some high contrast, high lighting. Right, and you see soft colors, and you see soft details, like the background's very, very blurry. And that can be sort of, sort of like a, a bokeh effect when it comes out of photography, and that can be used if used appropriately, but it takes a lot of practice to use it appropriately. And thankfully, Josh is starting his practice now when he's a young lad, because when he's like old like me, you know, coming close to his 30s, I'm 29 by the way, <laughs> he'll, he'll probably be way better than I am, right? Josh is just having a good time figuring things out in his experimental phase. 
If you look at his piece or any of his other work, and you'll find both of their links in the description below, you will see a culmination of several different styles because Josh is in, like I said, the experimental phase. That's when a beginner artist is sort of reaching out and taking bits and pieces of other artists' styles. And that's a healthy way of building your own style. And it might be like, oh my God, they're stealing styles. They're not, okay? If one artist completely copies another artist's style, chances are it's not gonna be one-to-one. -one. There's almost going to be zero way that those two styles are gonna be identical because there's they're, they're, one knows exactly what they want to do, right? or they know exactly how to implement a thing where the other one is just learning from what they've seen. But that person who's kind of copying from the other person's style is also implementing the stuff of their own. So that's sort of how people make their own styles. They experiment with all these other styles and it's healthy and it's good and it promotes growth and it's a wonderful thing, right? So Josh is doing that right now and that's his face and that's good. As long as he keeps that up, he's gonna be in a great, great spot. Because right now, Josh is getting a solid understanding of lighting values and colors, and, and it's, it's going to hopefully be a really fun time for him in the future, as long as he keeps going, right? Now, Momo over here has already been through these phases. She's already experimented with all these other styles, and she's sort of made her own style, cannibalized it from other artists' styles, just like I do. If you look at all my other pieces, there's plenty of inspirations and in other styles that I've taken from, from like professional concept illustrators to comic book illustrators, right? That's a healthy thing for any artist to do. So before we get into solidifying your style and implementing it in Twitter and Instagram and all that stuff, let's take one last look at these pieces and figure out what the real difference is, okay? Momo looks like everything fits together, everything blends together, everything works with each other. The poses, the line work, the colors, the blending, the shading, everything. She's got what's called stylistic consistency. That means that all of the elements in her piece, all those things I mentioned, all work together because she's practiced countless hours to make sure that everything does that. She knows exactly when she's working on something, what will look good with the other elements in her piece? What matches everything? What fits together? And if you look at Josh, he's still learning that, okay? So you, like I said, you'll see high contrast areas right next to lower contrast areas. If you look at just the armor alone, you'll see pieces that are high detail with, with uh, high contrast, like the line on the, uh, on the chest piece, right? That line across looks like it's got a, a bright flash and a, a deep cut and a fold where the metal is, that's great. But then you look at the shoulder pad right next to it and it's and it's kind of like low, a little low effort, a little, little softer, a little, little extra blending. The contrast doesn't look like it matches, like the light source doesn't even hit that, like almost as if that shoulder doesn't exist in the same room as the chest piece because the chest piece has all of those other elements reacting off it, whereas the shoulder does not, right? That doesn't fit and the helmet, the light source hitting the chest doesn't look like it's reaching the helmet in the same kind of way. There's stuff that in Josh's piece does not look like they fit together. So that is stylistically inconsistent. So with that in mind, let's continue. So let's get into the Instagram thing real quick. And it doesn't have to be Instagram, it could be Twitter or TikTok or any of this stuff. Oftentimes when some of these pieces that look very basic, like they only spend like 20 minutes in these things, will get so much love and, and adoration and attention Whereas maybe yours, if you spent like three to five hours on something else completely and, and then you're really proud of it, but it gets like a couple, like, oh man, you know, that's nice. It's okay. You know, it just it didn't get blown up like some of these other big stars. If you take that artist whose work looks like they took them far less time, like they did it just easy, right? In your opinion, because like to them, like I said, it might take them hours and hours and hours to perfect this thing. If you go back and look at them, some of their previous work, you'll probably see a lot of stuff in that style and a little bit of experimentation. So they have built an audience of people who expect that, exactly that. That's reason number one. Reason number two is because that artist has spent so much time doing that style that eyes, I'm just using this as an example, are no longer symbols. When an artist begins, right? They'll practice eyes. So they'll just draw eyes over and over again. And this might be you, and this could be anime eyes, or this could be portrait style eyes, or it could be noses or hands, but you won't put them on faces for the most part, because you're trying to practice eyes and like, oh, why would I care too much if eyes fit on faces? This is a very typical beginner style thing. So when you're practicing all these eyes and you're not practicing on how they fit on faces, you're making, oh, that's my eyes. 
These are my eyes. When I make eyes, this is them. I can do a couple different variations, but these are pretty much my eyes. Now, that's a bit of a problem because when you put them on faces, because you didn't practice them in three-quarter view, you didn't practice them looking down or having a strange expression or being in pain or any of these other kind of really interesting things, you just practiced your eyes. When you put them on these various other poses that you're trying out, they don't fit. And this is a very common beginner artist situation. Again, it's very experimental. A lot of my more recent works, I've been practicing a lot in Procreate and whatnot, and it's a lot of fun. And I plan on making some tutorials on Procreate in, in the future pretty soon. But you'll notice that I'm kind of more aiming towards this dark and gritty style because first of all, I've always loved it. It's really kind of charcoal-y and, and dirty and dark. So I'm focusing on this particular style. And once I figure this style out, I'll probably move on to another style or I might just stay here. It's very common for artists to just try out different styles. And once you figure it out, it's going to be easier for you to adopt another style. Not necessarily because that style is similar to yours, but because you'll have such a strong understanding of the fundamentals in your own style, you'll be able to sort of import those into this new style you're practicing. So it's gonna be this interesting transition, right? So if you are on Instagram or Twitter or Twitch or TikTok or any of these other platforms where you are an artist and you're trying to get noticed, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to try and focus on is nail your style down. Figure out if you like cartoony stuff, if you like anime stuff or chibi stuff or dark gritty stuff or paintings or big illustrations of landscapes or whatnot, right? First off, I would just recommend, and do not take this for gospel, okay? If you want to grow quickly, I would suggest picking a style that's more simple, a little easier, a little, little faster, because it's going to take a lot of pieces to build an audience. Not only that, but you're going to want to upload frequently, and you can't do that if these pieces are huge, if these are giant pieces that take you so long to make, and they might be beautiful, but it's not consistently uploaded and people are going, like, oh, they post something once every two months. <laughs> you know, they're not going to really want to follow that. They might and they might follow. They might trickle in. But if you post some stuff that's a little more on the easier side and even if you do these big illustrations that you just love, right, it, it's, it'd be good if you also did some easier, smaller stuff and those you can post because that is when you're experimenting with a style that is easy to make or easier to make, difficult to master, just like everything, really. Because a lot of, like I said, a lot of these kind of more cartoony artists and whatnot spend so long making these pieces, like a lot longer than maybe you think. And not only that, it takes just countless hours to perfect them because I'm, I guarantee you, they do not post everything that they make, right? They're probably going through several different pose variations and, and different compositions of their pieces before they figure, okay, this one's worthy of the post. Even if it only did take them 20 minutes, they probably made three or four different pieces that you just don't see and that they didn't think was worth it. But because they have a style that's quick and consistent and concise and they've practiced on it and, and, and things fit together and the eyes will move with the face and the line work all blends and everything looks nice and neat, they can do it relatively quickly and consistently. So they post and they upload and these things attract the attention of people like, oh wow, oh man, I love that style. So they're just gonna like and they're gonna follow and they're going to add a lot of love. And the way a lot of algorithms work like Instagram and Twitter and whatnot is when something gets a lot of love and attention, it looks at the people that like those things. And then it looks at their friends and says to those friends, hey, your friend liked this a lot. Or, hey, you like this. Well, a lot of other people who like that liked this. And that kind of keeps people on that platform. So that's sort of how you can work with the various algorithms as a beginning artist to grow your audience. And then once you get a solid understanding of, of your style and, and don't take it too seriously, okay? It's a good idea to have a style as soon as possible, but you do not want to rush this. You do not. Don't feel like you need to rush it. And I know it can be really, it can be such a drag and a huge headache and you're going, oh man, ah, ah I just want to style right now, you know? And you get really, really intense and maybe you get, a get aggravated at yourself. Don't, don't do that. Okay, just, just draw. Just have a good time. Make sure that no matter what you're doing, you are having a blast, all right? And if you find that you just like doing charcoal stuff, right? Or if you like doing cartoons or anime or any of this stuff or chibis or, or, or animal drawings or something. If you have the best time of your life as your artist's life, meaning that like, oh man, I could just jam out and draw this stuff all day long. Okay. Just do that. Even if it's weird or your friends don't like it, or if your parents aren't proud of you for it or whatever reason, if you just have a good time, do that because that's going to keep you drawing those things over and over again. Now, obviously don't draw just the same thing over and over again. If you have like an, like an artist will have like an OC, right? Or original character, they'll want to draw that one person doing the same thing or, or different things 
over and over again. I get that. I understand that. You can put a pin in that, build an audience off that, but I'm sorry, I pat my finger in your ear, but <laughs> it'd be better if you expanded your comfort zone and drew some other stuff. Maybe maybe have your OC doing something with bushes or, or, or trees if you're not good with trees. And then you'll have a bit of extra comfort zone with trees. Use your comfort zone as a vehicle to expand your comfort zone. If that makes any sense. If you have any questions, please comment down below. Thank you so much for Momo Deary or Ranger Liz, same person, by the, by the way. Their links will be down below. It's a link tree to all kinds of cool stuff. You, you like this piece, trust me, you'll love the rest of them. Josh, again, new, someone to keep your eye on, okay? Because that was me about four years ago. <laughs> again, all of these links will be down below. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you to my amazing patrons with whom I could not afford to do any of this stuff. And thank you all to you viewers so much. Seriously, I really appreciate it. Feel free to leave a like, comment down below if any of this made sense or if you have any questions, okay? Or comment below if you went and followed or checked out these other artists. I'm really interested to see what y'all think about them because I really love them. They're fantastic. I'm keeping my eye on Josh. <laughs> Subscribe for more tutorials, detailed analyses of artistic styles and time lapses because obviously I am an artist and I make a bunch of these things. Also, check out the stream. I made this on stream. Again, usually I talk more, but this time I had a sore throat. So know that I am still willing to stream even though I'm sick. That comforts some people, I've been told. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.